Draven out. And we are late, but we are live. Ascension Esports Dragon League coming right at you. We're getting into the semifinals. Guardian Angels versus the Abusement Park. Abusement Park have taken a 2-0 lead. I am your caster, Destro Squad, one of my co-caster of the I day, TSM Loose Cannon. And Loose Cannon, would you do us a favor and fill us in on what just happened those last two games we've been missing? All right, well, those last two games, uh, basically the first game, it was just superior team fighting coming from Team Abusement Park. The Guardian Angels were just all over the place and kept getting caught out by Gragas Ulti or Warwick Ulti, and it was just terrible for them. They got completely smashed. <laughs> the uh, the second game was a lot closer, and it was really back and forth, um, but due to superior rotations um, and the split pushing of the Trundle from the top lane, Team of Beast and Park got the win. Um, now we see the bands coming in, targeting the Phoenix 96 with the Tristana band. <laughs> Oh god, they've been they actually team abusement part of have banned the same three champions in the same order all games. It hasn't changed the entire time. And it, it's I don't know. I really don't know too much other than the Maokai being pretty potent. Um Sewer Storm on the Swain, is that a thing to be terrified of? Um they I haven't seen it. Neither has uh Guardian Angels, but I guess his KDA on OP.gg must be because they keep banning it. Um, the Oriana picked up for Angel of Night. That is probably her top mid laner, uh, coming into, considering she's not a mid lane main, and Oriana is relatively easy. You hit your R, hey, look, you're a useful champion. Huh. Um, the Gragas that was picked up on the side of the Abusement Park can be swapped between top and jungle, depending on what they want. I'm going to take a guess and say it's jungle, though. See the Janna coming through, too. That is some ardent abusing stuff. I'd like to see a Relic Shield start coming out of the AD carry on Team Abusement Park side. That would be interesting to see. And this is pretty interesting composition coming out of the Abusement Park. They do have a lot of that protection that comes from the Janna as, as well as a lot of that power that comes from the Janna. You were talking about the Ardent Sensor. It's one of the most ridiculous stats you can have in... It's just um, business in combination with the shield itself. So overall pretty prone. Gonna be interesting to see what Phoenix chooses to complement himself with when he takes the ADC role. Yeah, the um the draft coming out of the abusement park is probably gonna be with some kind of hyper carry uh AD carry based on um auto attacks alone. I'd like to see Phoenix's vein come out here. We haven't seen it the entire season. But I'm not sure if this is the right game for him to pick it. The Vi and Alawi are Vi Alawi and Oriana, they don't really work well together. The Alawi doesn't fit in with the rest of the comp that they've built so far from the Guardian Angel side. Like they've got hard engage and then Alawi. Right? So unless Alawi has flash, she can't really keep up with the rest of the team. I mean, even with the flash, all it takes is the Ooh. Jana to use the monsoon once and you're out of your own ultimate that you just set up. Yeah. We're seeing the vein hover, oh, and no. it's locked in. Ooh, the vein went through. What is the Guardian oh, Angels? Goodness. I don't know. When you see this type of thing at this level, specifically Dragon League, you should very well be <laughs> worried. Um, overall, yeah. and vein spotting is a very popular thing. I'm definitely going to pull out a vein spotting card for Phoenix 96 as we do this. But, um, yeah. you know, there's, they're too up. They can afford to go for the very risky type things. So we're going to see how it works out for them. Yeah, the... End the game pre the time when Vayne does damage. Right? So, and I've seen Phoenix's Vayne before. It's actually, he's not bad at it. I will straight up say he probably plays it like a gold player. So, and that's still worrisome because there's only two tiers of veins: <clears throat> challenger and absolute garbage. You right. <laughs> Ooh, I like the engage coming out of the team. That is the Gragas flex pick that we were talking about earlier. I'm 90% sure. And oh, the draft's been remade. Yeah, we are gonna have a remake, most likely due to a placeholder. Um, drop is on the side of the Abusement Park. 
We'll see if that was a placeholder. Looking into that for a second. Ooh, Cho'Gath. Cho. Zach was a Zach position. was Cho'Gath. I wonder, is the Cho'Gath a jungle or top one? It, it doesn't matter. It was the last pick, so they didn't need to communicate it. It wasn't necessary because there was uh, there were no picks or things that could come afterwards. All right. Hopefully, we get into this draft again. And see the same thing. Um, from the Guardian Angel side, we see a Karma support Jin ADC with an Orianna in the mid lane, Vi in the jungle, and an Alawi in the top lane. That is a lot of team fight power. The problem is, is that they seem counterproductive, right? Like you've got the Vi and the Orianna who want to go in, and then you've got the Alawi and the Jin who kind of just want to sit back, and then the Karma who wants to poke. Like their team comp, it works, but it doesn't at the same time, right? Um, I would argue that it's more of a skirmish comp. If they can get those jungle fights around Drag and around Baron, they do have like a pretty good chance of having good success, especially for contests around the Baron when you want to do that dance when you grind towards the call. But that's also assuming that they do get ahead in this game and they do have a lot to be worried about on the side of the picks that the Adjustment Park has. I'll be funneling. Yeah, I do feel as if the Guardian Angels team with their team comp kind of has to be at least a little bit ahead. For them to have a fighting a real fighting chance um otherwise they could just with team yes, comp sir. alone if it's just even i feel like the abusement park has a stronger comp due to the fact that they have engage disengage uh peel damage mixed all Aww. over the board um you got the chogath coming in for the true damage one shots on the gen too and the oriana if chogath hits a q on one of them they're probably going to die with the gragas Mmm, the taste of coward. So we are speeding through these picks. All picks were locked in. They were decided. So there's going to be nothing new other than the Zack pick um, that Bear Ruler is going to take. It is going to be for the Cho'Gath. Now let's talk they about that Cho'Gath. That war. pick can get ridiculously strong pretty fast if you don't stop it early. And I mean, first of all, the HP you can get, you can get over 5k around 20 minutes in the game. It's a yeah, pretty that is... terrifying pick. And on top of that, it's full tank plus the ultimate does like a thousand true damage. Have fun with that one. The real problem here, I think, is that the fact that they pick the champion that can't deal with it. Jin does not do enough damage to kill a health tank. He can't build Bork. And if he builds armor pen, it's kind of counterproductive to his damage. Right? Because he's mostly building crit and then bursting squishies, right? Um, until it doesn't, it isn't until like five or six items that he actually does a lot of damage Maybe to tanks. You left your brave pants at home. Want me to work <clears> while you go get them? These bands are very questionable. <laughs> but, I mean, that being said, Chogats typically don't really start stacking the uh, defensive stats until later. Typically, you do see like a Warmog's rush to get that it's really big Warmog's heart spike in health. Um, yeah. And then the only true item of armor in the core build of a Cho'Gath player is the uh, Right. Righteous Righteous Glory. right. It, really, it really depends on what they're going to build this game. Uh, honestly, this is Bronze Silver. They can build whatever the hell they want, and it'll probably be yeah. okay. Yeah, that is yeah, that's pretty much straight it right there. <laughs> Like I don't want to be I don't want to be like this is bronze silver they they don't they don't need to like know anything but I think one Cho'Gath. of the key things is really just comfort as long as you feel comfortable yeah. and confident um, that can take you farther than a lot of just like straight out meta compositions can but that really depends on your whole team still having that same type of confidence with you. Why well, no Super Storm is really strong in the Gragas. He played it in the first match and he ulted their mid laner back repeatedly over and over into Team Abusement Park. And the Oriana just was dead, and that was it. They couldn't fight at all because any time that they would attempt to, Gragas would ulti the Oriana. And maybe that was bad positioning by the Oriana or just Tsuru being a freaking monster. I'm not sure. But I do know that every single fight, somehow Oriana ended up in the middle of the entire team. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is... Oriana's one of the safest and one of the not safest champions. It, it's kind of weird to say. Um, yeah. In lane, she has a lot of 
uh, utility to keep her alive and a lot of movement speed using the dissonance to get her out of sticky situations. And she's also really good at just last hitting at uh, maintaining the lane where she wants the line to be. But that being said, she has no hard escape. She doesn't have a dash, she doesn't have a blink. So when you get engaged on by something like a Cho'Gath, by something like a Gragas, by something with any form of CC, you have to be ready for that to come in order to avoid impending demise, which apparently Sewer Storm's been bringing. You have to either dodge it or die. Uh, the good thing that I can see out of the Guardian Angels and their, their high point is the fact that Ori can ball the Vi, and Vi can ulti Vayne or Ari, and they can just do that combo and one shot one of the people or two if they do it correctly they can kill the entire back line without uh team abusement park being able to react quick enough due to the ulti combo um but what, what the real champion that i don't see fitting into this is the alawi that is the real champion in that entire comp that i don't see fitting what yeah, they should have is they, yeah. they probably should have put some engage on the top laner or maybe a split pusher or something like that I don't even think just that. I think in general, taking a Lowey when there's a Gragas, when there's a Janna, that's not okay. a pretty wise situation. You know, you do the leap of faith. Oh, now, and it looks all <clears> cool, <throat> and here come the tentacles, and here comes Japan, and, and there's Jigga. the explosive cast. There's the monsoon, constantly kicked out of what could be the biggest damaging ult of your life. Um, there's a lot of safety for the abusement park, but that being said, there's still a lot of damage potential on the side of Guardian Angels. Every one of their champions um, that does they a lot of damage does a lot of damage. Yeah, the Karma, very good uh, early base stats, early base scaling, not scaling, base damage. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. That um, provides pretty big lane harassment to make it hard for Phoenix, as well as Jin, the fourth shot, auto crit, easy damage. It's going to be a pretty rough lane for Phoenix 96. And of course, the Orianna. All it takes is one good shockwave to win a team fight. Sometimes, yeah. Um, the thing that I find most interesting is that every single one of the people from Team Abusement Park can stop Alawi in some way. You've got the Gragas ulti, you've got Chogas silence, you've got Ari charm, you've got the Vayne knockback, and the Janna monsoon. <laughs> There's nothing that Alawi can do if they wait until after the ulti's over, right? Like. As long as they don't waste their CC while she's in animation, she's not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, but it also really does depend on, like, if it is allowing if the, it's... in by herself, then, of course, that's the situation. But when you have the chaotic picture, when you have uh, our team, yeah. Um, you know, the Vi going in with the Assault and Battery, as well as pretty much anything else they have to force engages, it might not be the same story. You're right. I'm looking forward to see that a full AD buy coming out of Angel and Ninja. That's what I want to see. The one-shot ulti buy. Full lethality. Let's go. Vayne and Ari cannot survive that. <laughs> so we are going to get into the load screen now. Ascension Esports Dragon League. This is the semifinals. Guardian Angels versus the Abusement Park. Gonna take a look at those keystones as we hit this loading screen. This is game point for the Abusement Park. Once they take this, they take their ticket to the finals. Can Guardian Angels bring it back with a reverse sweep? We're gonna find out soon enough as we get into this load screen. Keystones coming out, and so far, nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, no, there is really nothing out of the ordinary. We see the Cho'Gath taking the 5% extra health off of the Bond of Stone, I believe is what it's called now. Um, is it Bond of Stone? No, it's Stoneborn Pact, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, my bad. I think Bond of Stone is a cooler name, but okay. <laughs> Ooh, we're gonna. I, th I believe we're gonna see an Ardent Sensor coming out of this Karma oh. with the Wind Speakers. Yeah, that's. It does make a lot of sense, especially because Karma is the one who has the AOE shield of all things. Yeah, and it's actually pretty useful on the entire team. It's not, there's no champion that it's like useless on. Like sometimes you'll have, have like, uh, say, there's no champion that this attacks not useful on. What am I thinking? <laughs> Every champion has auto attacks. <laughs> what am I thinking? Yeah, I mean, theoretically. Theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> 
But here I we mean, go, come on. getting into the rift. Guardian Angels versus the Abusement Park. The game is going to start now. Huge, huge stress for Guardian Angels to stay in this. Yeah, let's see if they can pull off the reverse sweep. I'm looking forward to it. We see the Relic Shield start coming out of the vein to get that Arden Sensor even faster on the Jana. No way. Oh, that is a strategy right there. I'm surprised they didn't take the Barrier Flash. Or ba Barrier Heal uh, strat with no exhaust. But I guess with the Vi and Alawi, it's kind of necessary. Oh my goodness. Is, is this meta? Have I missed something here? All right, so... Basically, what's happened in the past patch is that Philol came out with with some some new stuff. You know that AP carry main. You only buy it when there's an Arden abusing support. If your support's buying Arden, you can go Relic Shield on those hyper carries. Basically, what you do is your first back you upgrade it to Targons, and it, uh, once it's fully stacked, it gives you the 300 400 health shield to stop you from getting bursted. Along with the fact that it gives your support even more money to buy that Arden. Plus, it heals both of you when it stacks. So it provides a lot of lane sustain with three health pots and the extra money for the support. And I've actually seen Ajana get Arden by eight minutes in. First back. That is not okay with how strong the item is right now. And so right now we are going to get into the jungling. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Both standard starts for both junglers. Kind of interesting to see a Cho'Gath go for straight into the blue start of all things. Usually, uh, Cho'Gath, being the champion that he is, very dynamic in where he can start. He can start red buff, raptors, blue buff, wherever, whatever spawns at the right time. But yeah, in this case, I'm surprised he didn't go for the raptor start. Yeah, I think this game raptor start probably would have been best. Um, the thing for the abusement park is that top, ganking top lane not really necessary especially after level six for top lane uh the 1v2 can come out from the alawi if they play it if the alawi plays it right i think bot lane is the most gankable lane out of anything in both sides uh, i mean there's a lot to deny ganks in the bot lane as well um yeah I would really place Angel of Night to be the most gankable, depending on how much she pushes, and it does look like she's shoving that lane up a little bit. Yeah, Disease is the type of player to let them shove it in and then force it back on them when they make a mistake. And we are seeing the base damage of the Karma Pit come out pretty well. The harassment is huge from Pie Man. He's even distracting Phoenix from farming. Which yeah, I mean, is. That's the tricky part about taking a vein. You give up that early game power. Let's just hope that they can survive long enough for it to reach its power spike. I wonder if he's going to go board this. Slight bias. Uh, just, just a little bit. I'm a vein main, JK. Nah, I actually, I like the champion vein. I don't like playing um, with it because most people don't understand what they're doing. Uh, but if played correctly, the champion is so strong. There's a really good vein is just so hard to deal with. That Alawi is wasting her mana a lot. She's she's almost out, and Cho'Gath is there now. He might look for something up there. Now so far, pretty slow game coming from both sides of the jungle bear ruler and angel of ninja just looking to farm up completely and i mean overall when you're doing when you're going for a farm fest it does benefit the cho'gath a little bit more getting into the mid game yeah this mid game's a lot stronger than vice um i feel like vice should be abusing her early game power um with ganking but this is the way it's been for the past two games it's been just straight farm fest in the jungle, all the games. No matter what champion they were playing. It's a bit of a shame because with the champions you have, especially the Vi, the Cho'Gath, 
The Vi especially, I'm going to point that out the most. There's so yeah. much gank potential in having a champ like that. The Vault Breaker, very potent engage tool, and it's pretty easy to pump out just poop out damage when it comes to playing Vi. Yeah, we're seeing the Alawi run into mana. Like the... Ooh, John is so low. That's karma damage for you. Yeah, the base damage. Nothing to scoff at. It was something mentioned in the champion select. But so far, the gold's still staying pretty even, but the pressure is on for the bot lane of the Abusement Park as they're constantly shoved in. And taking a gamble on this start is not really paying off just yet. Um, actually, Jin is up by 10 farm, and it's it's starting to show in the way that they're playing. Jin's actually running in a minute, too. The one thing I do have to say is that the Abusement Park is, are not using their abilities. <laughs> they're just... Ooh. Ooh, we almost have a catch out here. Angel of Ninja able to get out over the wall, survives for now. The Disease looks to get the charm on the Pie Man. Pie Man is ignited, going for the kill. The Disease running very low on mana. Bear Roller flashing over the wall. A smidge of health left, but they do get the first blood, and the heal goes out, saving Bear Roller. Now Phoenix still alive, getting pretty low, has to back off of Glory Hound, but overall first blood for the Abusement Park, and a very weird confrontation. That was honestly... Could have gone both ways right there with the Cho'Gath getting so low from the dragon and then the fight breaking out. It was bad positioning by Karma and then the Vi um, got caught in the drag pit. Which, did she get away? Yeah, she did. Just jumped over the wall. Flashed over <laughs> the wall. No, wait. No, she actually just straight queued. Yeah. Okay. I was... Oh, wait. I was actually really surprised they didn't see the Cho'Gath blind flash after her. Normally with the Bronze Silver League, or even just Gold Plat, like, all the way up to Plat, you'll see that, that flash to follow immediately. I guess... Well, with the flash still being up, it was the better choice, but... It was the better choice, but I just, I did not expect it. Uh, I did not expect Bear Ruler to serve, almost get murdered by dragons. <laughs> Seven minutes into the game, he's barely hitting level five, so he needs to really start trying to pump up that tempo. Angel of Ninja as well. Angel of Ninja is even a level below. Because he attempted to take that dragon and it didn't turn out well for him. And that set him behind really far. I wonder how close he is to... When we see a potential setup from Pie Man unable to get the snare off the tether, but Deadly Flourish does land. Does get a snare. Not too much harassment just yet, though. If I got level 5 up to the Raptors, I think she's only a camp behind in XP of the Chogath. Well, there's that catch-up EXP. Does Call yeah. Angel Ninja stay relevant even when you're jungling like complete crap? I mean, that's just junglers, period. <laughs> Let's be honest here. And here we go. Bear Ruler walks into Angel of Night. Will we see the Shockwave go out? Choosing not to go for it, just gets the harassment is content with that. Yeah, she... Wait, Vi was there. Oh, they... I don't think they could have won the 2v2. I think that's why they backed off. Because Ari would have uh, rotated, and they would have lost. Oh, holy damage. This is getting interesting. It does look like they're trying to set up something in this bot lane. So many bodies on that side. Gonna disengage it. I was expecting a four man die for a second. I thought they were gonna go all out. Um, you have to keep in mind that a lot of people in platter below don't really understand how to execute the dives with the uh, um, swapping aggro and stuff. And unless like you take the time and actually explain it to the entire team, it can normally end up really bad for you. Right. Like, you've seen, everyone's seen the plays of people diving and failing, right? And that's normally what happens if it's not coordinated almost perfectly. Yeah, I get a little of the, the Vulcan Dignitas stuff. Yeah. Holy. <laughs> oh, Phoenix getting punished, able to get out of the curtain call just in time. The bullets are still flying, but we do see that Bear Roller is trying to get in on this. Trying to do something to protect his teammates. Has to back out. Too much damage coming out from Glory Hound. Disease. Looking the charm. Actually uses the Spirit Rush. 
is the disease gonna commit to a potential kill shockwave goes out whiffs and both ultimates down in the mid lane i believe he ulted to dodge the shockwave because most orianas would have just ulted right then and there but angel did not use it and it was that just caused the waste there were <laughs> they look at the all chat same the feels man <laughs> they both whiffed at least you're seeing some sort some uh sportsmanship here i don't know if we can call that sportsmanship but we do have a roam coming out from the disease missing the charm the most crucial part of getting an engage going when it comes to playing the re and kind of down here almost for no reason just absorbing the exp at this point but does get a charm gets rooted by the deadly flourish uses the ignite the disease gets healed by the phoenix and despite being in no danger oh. that heal pretty much a waste yeah, I don't think that any of that was worth. Um, the real problem with ganking the Team Abusement Park's uh, botlane is they don't have any way to engage for you. So you have to engage for them for to do anything. That And Phoenix doesn't seem to want to commit to anything when somebody comes in with his ulti. But it's been working both ways around. The botlane yeah. of Guardian Angels, they have... So much damage that every time someone has roamed bot, they just scare him away. Bear Ruler comes bot, punished, kicked out of that lane. Here comes Dead Disease coming down. Get out of my lane. Always and always, Guardian Angels just have the advantage on that side of the map. Trigger didn't have ulti there. There was really no way he could have stolen that, unfortunately. It's Rift Herald going over to the Guardian Angels. Uh, who picked it up? Do you know? Um, I think it was by. Let's go check. Yep, it is picked up by Angel of Ninja Rift Herald. If they can get, actually, they can just pop a bot lane and get a first tower like that. Bot lane actually, the smart decision really would be to pop it from the uh, tri bush so that the minions can't stop it, and it'll just hop right over the wall there. <laughs> Never thought of doing that. Uh, it works. It's just it's so like random and most people don't think of it yeah, but there we're seeing we go. bot lane go top lane this is questionable because rift herald is in the bot lane which means we're gonna have that team reaction of turret damage coming in and still sending suru storm down there isn't really gonna be enough charm goes out doesn't land on angel of night angel of night does take the orb of deception but still there has to be a response for this rift herald it has to be something more than suru storm otherwise they're gonna lose this tower Body slam misses. I think he whacks the eye, right? Oh, wait, hello? Is Did that for the wave there? The Good guy, Rift Herald, turning around for him. Was the ulti for wave there from Gragas? Is that why? I'm pretty sure he could have ulted Jin into the tower and done something. Like, at least to do damage or scare him away. But, I mean, that works too. I think that's Dragon for the Guardian Angels. I'm not certain. Missing out on a little bit of that Scudder 7. But yeah, Dragon picked up on the side of the Guardian Angels. That is an Ocean Drake. Does pretty well when he set up those sieges, but in the middle of fights, doesn't really offer too much. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be as useful for the Guardian Angels as it... Actually, no, I don't think it's going to be as useful for the Guardian Angels as it would be for the Abusement Park due to the um, Gragas and Cho'Gath picks. If the Abusement Park got that dragon, it would have been a very different story, most likely. Seeing the Bort come out of the vein, not going crit this early into the game yet. And that's a little bit strange to me to not go for crit build, considering the only real I don't tank know, is allowing. Yeah, it's gonna be allowing. And I mean, I mean, I guess it's to like. Like, when Vi jumps on you, you can go ahead and use the Bork proc, and then the lifesteal, right? Like, I mean, for outplaying. But, I mean, I guess it's just personal preference. Vayne can build basically anything and still be useful due to her base scaling. Trust me, I played full tank Vayne. 
one thing I like that I see on the side of the amusement park is they're really warding up that side. And if Angel of the Ninja was smart, with no tower being over there, I would personally just outright cut through that jungle and look to gank Suru Storm repeatedly. But Angel of Ninja's not even attempting it, but even if he did, all those wards would spot him out. Hard trading coming out of this RA, completely out trading the Oriana there. I mean, that's all it takes. One charm and you pretty much win the trade automatically. I believe Ori was ma managed to get a QW off, but I think that was it. Okay, I'm really confused by Angel Ninja right now. This guy has to gank. You have a Sultan battery up. Find an opportunity and take it. Because being 0 0 0 this far into the game and behind in CS to a Cho'Gath who's at least attempted a gank is pretty sad. Yeah, the... um. The Vi, she's actually a really good champion for junglers um, who aren't as, or, or don't understand like when to do what, because hey, my ulti's up, that is my timer for ganks. Like you can use it as a timer for, okay, I'm ganking whenever this is up, right? It's like Nocturne, you just wait. Whenever your ulti's up, gank. Um, and I'm surprised that she's not using the power coming out of this Vi. All of the early game power that they had is going away it's slowly dwindling until cho'gath is just gonna outscale she's even going full damage you missed the whole entire pre-level six window to take out dot disease and dot disease was pushing from time to time it just seems like angel ninja wants to go after camp after camp do something on the map man yeah we do see cs leads coming out of both mid and adc from the guardian angels Gotta interrupt you there, because we do have a snare on the Super Storm. Super Storm taking a lot of damage. Curtain call opens up. Will the bullet land? And yes, it does. Glory Hound even ups the match. And way too close was Suru Storm. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the Karma Speed and, and uh, CC was too much for the Gragas. He couldn't get away. Did he flash? Uh, he did flash. Did? did use the Explosive Cast, but... The big thing Even was using explosive cast on Pie Man instead of Glory Hound, who did open up the curtain call during that moment. Feels bad, man. I don't know, feels good if you're Guardian Angels. You're right. <laughs> uh, so Where's so far, this game Gordon is still, a... still nope. pretty even. Oh. We, we got the gold. 500 in the favor of Guardian Angels. Uh, what's the button to pull with the gold again? The gold? It's X. X, alright. Oh. Yeah, we have a 100 gold lead for Guardian Angels mid laner. An almost 1000 gold lead coming into the 80 carry from Guardian Angels. Goodness, did you see that combo damage come out of Angel's Knife? Does have the Relonomicon. Built it before Dot Disease did. Dot Disease with the kill ahead. Not enough to get the gold lead as to gold in favor of the gold knight. A lot of that thanks to that first tower and thanks to that CS lead. Yeah, no kidding. We do so random wins coming out of the Alawi first item. Oh, the against the team out. with Angel of Night trying to be patient with the assault of battery. Meanwhile, Dutch is looking to go on to the engage of Angel of Night, but the shockwave whiss it whiffing was pretty big in allowing Dot Disease to survive, but still so much damage coming out Angel of Night. The Flash and Ignite Burn on the side of Dot Disease puts Angel of Night in the advantageous situation. As of right now, the Guardian Angels are ahead in almost every way. In every lane, except for top lane, they're ahead. I believe Vi is actually have a CS lead on the Trogath by... 500 about um yeah top lane series storm is ahead by about 300 gold it's not that much of a difference um but worse i think we're gonna see a 1k gold lead coming in for the guardian angels very soon just due to the farming which is gonna hurt them in the long run from the abusement park so here's where a bit of brawling might come out. The Infernal Drake is up, and towards the mid game, Infernal Drake is decent. I always like to argue 
Mountain Drake, best Drake at all periods of the game. Infernal Drake does scale, and with the composition both of these teams have drafted, of course they're going to want this Infernal Drake. So we are going to yeah, get think... a bit of a Drake dance. I'm looking forward to seeing some team fighting coming out of these teams, because that's going to be where it's going to be really fun to watch. And they're trying to scare them away. Rupture does land. And we do have a bit of an offset. Dodge disease gets the charm, and that's going to be the end of Angel of Night whipping the shockwave one last time before dying. Curtain call is open. Dodge disease gets chunked out. Not going to be enough, but the Abusement Park picks up a kill and prevents their tower from going down. Uh, that shoot from Drano was actually really good. It makes it so that Ari does not have to back off of that crit shot. Otherwise, she would only be at 1 2 off bars right now. And the big thing about that last fight is Angel of Night should have seen that coming. The positioning both teams had, it was very obvious where they were. We saw... Uh, Not to mention they had vision all over it. Yeah. If they have wards all over the places where the are the Oh, fight for it. What in the world? Angel of Ninja almost able to get the kill. It's actually the Phoenix who kills the dragon. Now Pine Man trying to run away from Dot Seas gets out one of the cues to teleport coming out of Sewer Storm. Probably should have canceled it at that point, but that is overall a win for the abusement part. Yeah, they managed to pick up the dragon and the kill before that. Um The Phoenix during that popped his ultimate and then just Oh. No, no. JK. <laughs> Guess so. <laughs> That's the flash out of the Oriana and the Gragas ulti. Uh, but Phoenix, as I was saying, he popped his ulti during that fight and then stutter stepped back and forth. He couldn't decide who to go after. <laughs> Either the Alawi or uh, the rest of the team. I mean, one of the big things about that last fight is it should have just been freely bear roller taking that dragon. The fact that Phoenix took it. It's a little bit scary for future situations when smite fights do break out. Yeah, it's kind of like, wait, he has smite and Cho'Gathol. What happened? Here we go, right? Storm. Like... Trying to go hard on Gloryhound. Does get snared by the Deadly Flourish. Gloryhound looks to try and outplay this one. Is going to back off only to the I don't think the heal was that necessary. Um, but, I mean, to each their own. Uh, we have a giant summoner spell lead coming out of the Tomb Amusement Park. We've got the heal on Jin down, flash on Oriana, flash on Karma, flash on Bai, all down. With the only thing down on the Amusement Park is Ari's flash and Gragas' teleport. But the question is, can they take advantage of that? The real question is, do they even know they have an advantage? <laughs> <laughs> Especially with that last fight. Like, that fight, yeah. there was a lot burnt when that happened. There was so much going on. Aggression onto Sewer Storm uses a pretty good use of the explosive cast, but the curtain call is going to be the rebuttal to that as the third shot takes out Sewer Storm. Three in a row, not one miss. I like it. Yeah, Glory Hound doing really good with that curtain call. This is going to lead them to taking another tower this will set the towers to three and nil in favor of charm lands on the mid laner is it gonna be enough finally the shockwave connects but does still drop to dot disease disease was so close to the tower range there even one hit probably could have changed that fight yeah absolutely yeah. in the of night getting caught Constantly by those charms. Not looking too well. 0-2-0. Zero, zero. And really at this point, I don't think it should be 1v1. You should really start seeing the roams come out of Angel of Night. Looking to fight with the team. Looking to try and get a combination shockwave. And almost a kill onto Da Disease. Flashing over the wall. Flash burnt from Da Disease as Angel of Ninja catches that gank opportunity. I'm just going to point out the fact that Alawi wasted her teleport on the, on the turret and bot lane when Phoenix was pushing. It was cancelled almost immediately. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Being cancelled will put it on a shorter cooldown, though, so see if we'll make that same mistake later. But again, Team Amusement Park have the summoner spell advantage. I 
being said, though, the pressure is on this mid tower. It will fall, putting it to four to one. Power the objective game strongly in favor of Guardian Angels. At least they have even so, done. So Root is on. Here comes the curtain call. Will it land? Flush a great defense, a great shockwave. It's not going to be enough as the explosive cast looks to disengage that possible kill they almost had on Ghoul. That explosive cast, if aimed a little bit differently, actually could have got them two free kills, I believe. Re engage and actually won that. But I mean, it's alright. It's split decision to try and save Ghoul. You know, the, the whole point of that shockwave was saving Ghoul. Get killing. Shock waves on guarding the angels. Oh, look. <laughs> I was like, man, why, why are you giving me stuff right now? <laughs> I love how it doesn't even say his name, it just says tap. But yeah, now we're gonna have another tower drop. And so far, we've yet to see too much affection that's come out from Phoenix and Spain. Um, so far, Dodge Z is really doing the most for this team. And that's mostly coming from 1v1s now. Phoenix chasing on. Not gonna work out. Angel is low on mana, and there's an engagement from the disease. Gets melted using the spirit rush. Too ambitious is the only words you can use for that. Yeah, no kidding. The entire team was not ready to follow up on that. We were all in the jungle, and he was in, the gym, and he went, just ulted straight into the gym crit, which was not very decision. Also, I feel like what is the item of being? You know, that would be an amazing term for this. <laughs> The Vayne is running on a, a Borg, and I think PD is the next item. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this build. Not for this matchup. Yeah. Flash not to Earth. mention... Not to mention, she didn't upgrade Tarkons, which means that they she's playing the Relic Shield strat wrong. So she pulled out this strat that gave her up her early game even more, and then didn't play it correctly. I mean, I'm not going to comment on the strat because I have no idea what this what this boosted animal strat is. <laughs> Listen, as an AD carry main and somebody who's been doing it in ranked for the past uh, few days, it's really strong if you can pull it off. If. But you have to play it correctly. Survive the first five levels. And actually upgrade the item. <laughs> is gonna be in the middle of four members gets dropped. By man's gonna be next. Two kills picked up. And now in the crosshairs is Serious Orb. He tries to run away, able to flash out of the curtain call, survives. But now the tempo is shifting in favor of the abusement part. The question is, are they going to try to push for towers or take Baron? I believe that the Baron would be a good decision right now with two people down for another 30 seconds. It could be, but at the same time, you are taking on a smite fight if Angel of Ninja can get into there. And grouping up for a potential shockwave is still dangerous at this that time. That is true. That is very true, but uh, the smite fight shouldn't even be a fight is the problem. It shouldn't be a 50-50 considering you have a Cho'Gath. Yeah, but, but considering what we saw Bear Ruler do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't exactly trust him to ulti the, the objectives. Yeah, this is interesting movement coming up from Guardian Angels. They are looking to aggressively ward this side of the Abusement Park jungle. And Bear Ruler trying to get shot. his red buff is stolen out in front of him. And what yeah. a cheeky way to escape, using that Blast Plant. Cheekiest of ways. What do you think of the new Blast Plants that have been added? It's cheeky. It's it's kind of dumb. It is cheeky. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Just, I'm gonna stick with cheeky. Yeah. And Sirius Storm's a little bit overextended here. We do see an, an attempted engagement coming up. Yard Stoney looking to try and cut him off, possibly stop the body slam. And there is Angel of Night using the Vault Breaker. Will the Assault and Battery come out? No, they're choosing not to go for that. Very tanky is Sirius Storm. Well, I actually has no um, tank items. It's straight damage on this body. 
which is weird to say the least. You could make it very disastrous for when there is an attempted 5v5. And we do have the root from the Deadly Flourish onto Zulu Storm. Yard Stoney getting a little bit too close. The charm is going to land. That might be the end of Yard Stoney. He's trying his best to run away. Phoenix wants to take him out. There's the assaulted battery used onto Phoenix. Instantly condemned away. Shockwave lands on three. Ghoul getting extremely low. Gets picked off by Angel of Night. The fight's still going on. Bear Ruler trying to get as close as he can with a slither of health. Gets dropped to the chin and kills back and forth. Angel of Night trying to survive. Deadly Flourish just land, but Angel of Night making a terrible choice and so does glory hound as the ace and quadra kill coming out from phoenix 96 and there's that main pick that we were talking about he's reached the point where he can actually do things in team fights this is where Vayne shines when they cannot kill her with that vi ulti like they didn't coordinate the vi ulti and the oriana ulti which caused the Vayne to survive everything in the early game early part of the fight allowing her to just free hit on the entire team that is not something you want, especially coming out of a champion from like Vayne. Especially coming out from what Angel of Ninja did. There was no backup for that insult and battery. You just—it it was almost like you just did it. Yeah, like you got to communicate those, those types of things. You can't just do it and expect your team to follow up. There was no follow up on the assault and battery, and I would place the blame more on Angel of Ninja than anything else. Yeah, I think I think it really was because he dove into four people, and their entire team was like. All the way back, probably at least a um, hundred. Uh, what, what is it? It's fucking Timo's away. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what the uh, the unit is in in the league. I don't remember. Um, but they were pretty far away. That being said, though, they passed up a really good Baron opportunity. I mean, Suru Storm is pretty tanky. Does have the reach in, and with the build that Phoenix is going, that should be Baron right there, <laughs> plain and simple. And, uh, but they Baron actually has... only got a tower off. Like he's gonna get caught out. There goes the ignite. It's not enough. Dodge is getting a little bit too cocky with that one. The curtain call is open up. Looking to get onto goal. All oh, two. So much damage to come out. Tries to use the Yama's Ghost Blade. Dodges the charm and is able to escape with his life. Both of them. That was sloppy from both sides. Yeah. And now look at this. Bear Ruler taking a lot of damage. But here comes Phoenix 96. Looking to delete Angel of Ninja. Will we see the assaulted battery come out? No, he's deleted. And now Phoenix 96 looking at the glory hound and what a great flash to come out from Suru Storm. Catch it out, Angel of Night! And that is a triple kill for Phoenix 96. That's gonna be the Baron. Um, what I really want to point out there is that Gragas completely just picked off two members of their team with the OT and then the flat body slam. Along with the fact that Phoenix did over half of Angel of Ninja's health with one hit. That is one scary vein. Yeah, let's just take it. A, let's just take a second to admire Angel of Ninja's build. Just look at the warrior enchantment, at the triforce, and look at the team comp he's going against. Why would you draft that? Why would you build that? Why would you go so heavy when so heavy into damage when their team is heavy into damage as a whole? Um, this game, what Vine needs to do is she needs to be a tank. They don't have, like, Alawi's a tank, but she can't get in front of the rest of the team. Really, like, she doesn't have any CC or anything. Vine needs to distract long enough for her damage to be Oh! Angel of Ninja got the steal, but is it going to be worth it? Going to drop to Dada Seas. Meanwhile, Fine Man trying to survive. Yarstoni able to get off the leap of faith, but it really did nothing for them. Now the chase is on. Deadly Flourish just goes out. Land on to Phoenix. That's going to be the disengage. They get the dragon, but they lose two members. Yeah, this game is all over the place. I think it's very highly in Team Amusement Park's favor, but... If played correctly with the comp that the Guardian Angels have drafted, it is possible for them to come back. That's yeah, very possible. Yeah, Shockwave is the biggest if factor in any game yeah. where there's no Rayana. The thing is that she's been landing three man, four man every single fight, and it hasn't mattered. 
Oh, will it matter? This time the Shockwave goes off, melts Phoenix, but the Monsoon heals him up pretty quickly. They're trying to take out Bear Ruler. Bear Ruler able to walk away. He should be able to heal up if he's not attacked soon. Pie Man looking to go back in, takes a lot of damage, gets punished for it, is not dead though. And what a back and forth exchange at that tower. Still, the tower does fall. Does Bear Ruler have warm-ups? No. Nah. All right, well, that was the power of Jonna being shown right there. Can't kill an AD carry unless you kill them before Jonna can heal them. Yeah, that was a lot of healing to come out of Google. Dude. I think it's literally his entire health bar. Yeah, Phoenix nice and healthy. Now Super Storm, gonna have to try and make some plays happen, but the pressure is on, trying to get Glory out. Glory out picks up Dot Disease. Zuru Storm able to survive. Deadly Flourish still go off the roof on the Bear Ruler. Bear Ruler trying to get away. Will he be able to survive? Uses the Flash to get away. And that could be another tempo shift in favor of Guardian Angels. We'll see how they play this with the mid laner down. Yeah, there is a 45 second timer coming out for the Dead Disease, which is a long time for their mid laner to be down. Um, it's, I don't believe there's any objectives to even take. The, the most that they can look for is an inhibitor. Uh, an inhibitor turret, but they all of their waves are pushing in. I don't think this is going to amount to anything yeah. other than a bit more gold in the pockets of Jin. I mean, even then, you you know, vision is an objective as well. I, I would straightforward put it. Yeah. You may not have much to take off the map, but you have a lot to put on the map, and that is vision. Yes, that is true. Establishing that look for places to get those picks. I think they're going for the defensive uh, vision into their jungle because they know that the amusement park is going to start pushing up again as soon as Ari's out, which is exactly what they're doing with the end of the Baron. Baron ending on the amusement park now, it is a straight um, money-based fight now. With three dragons over on the side of the Guardian Angels against the Shogat. Oh, by the way, he upgraded... His relic. Ooh, finally! It took him like 36 minutes to figure it out. Oh, <laughs> Angel of Ninja, what are you doing without your team? Charm goes out, lands on the by man, and Barrel Roller eats it up, gets another stack. And now two down. Angel of Ninja, please. Please, just delete that Trinity Force. You don't need it. Out goes the Shockwave. Arden Sensor Shield going out, protecting Phoenix. Full There's that Relic man. Shield. It completely blocked the shockwave. That's why the strat is so good. He got caught and it didn't matter. I'm just going to point out the fact that it took six auto attacks from Bane to burst through Vi and her Steric's gauge. That is and th and that, heartbreaking. That's the lack of power of the build Angel of Ninja has taken. Yeah, with the problem with um, the lower elo is that you'll see set builds come out. Everyone likes to go to like pro builds and look up the hot build that their favorite person is doing. And then copy it. Almost caught out. Able to use a pretty good body plan. Slippery, slippery, fat man. That being said though, Guardian Angels <laughs> still have all the inhibitor towers up. This, this game is 6-6 six, six in towers, so even though the Abusement Park has come back pretty strong, it's... They, they haven't picked up the most critical of the game. We might see a fight break out. Superstorm looking to catch out Angel of Night. Angel of Night caught back. Did boost the flash. Here comes the assault and battery getting popped. Shockwave is huge. Gets three. But the shield is massive. Angel of Ninja going to drop. And now will we see anything else picked up? No. Yarid Stoney drops the bear roller. Phoenix trying to run in. Trying to take out whoever he can. He gets dropped by Glory Hound. Superstorm going in. Getting chunked out is getting picked off by the tower. So much health getting dropped so fast. And the auto attack from Angel of Night able to do it big. Here comes the curtain call. It's courage for Bear Ruler. Glory Hound picking up that kill. And now four down on the side of the amusement park. And it only costed them two. Uh, I believe that might be Elder Drake. Maybe a Baron too, but I don't believe so. I think they're, they're pushing for the inhibitor now though. Yeah, that I was. Think, I think we can say it. We have a fiesta on our hands. No kidding. The real problem there is that John is the one who got caught and wasn't able to survive. She wasn't able to use flash. She wasn't able to, to use her exhaust that entire fight. Phoenix didn't use her flash either. He walked up way too far and took Jin right to the face. 
It was just misplays from Team Amusement Park. Even with a 10k gold lead, showing what... How team fights can really um, turn out in drafting. And it was pretty critical to see from the get Angel of Night. But the flash on Angel of Night did keep her alive. And at that point... You gotta, you gotta kind of take your losses, especially with the way the team fight was going. Once Phoenix was caught out and killed, and not having the protection of Golo too, it's, it's not time. It's not go time anymore. Um, yeah, it was, it was really just a poorly fought team fight by Team Amusement Park. Probably the worst one of this entire series so far. I don't know. It's, it's a fiesta. So you're not wrong. I got a lot more to go. There's 30 kills on the board. <laughs> I think my favorite part, the slippery fat man, all I can imagine is oil Gragas. <laughs> Just... <laughs> so now there's something I didn't like about what the Guardian Angels did. They had a pretty big wave going for the bot tower. Would have been a lot better if they dedicated to that bot tower rather than going after the mid lane tower. It's much better for when you want to do these prolonged Baron dances. They actually could have taken um, the mid inhibitor and went straight for that outer Drake and killed it before uh, the Abusement Park could have reacted. But they didn't take the... Because the Abusement Park actually all rotated towards Baron to get vision control. Uh, and the Elder Drake was just sitting there with one ward on it. So right now, with Super Storm top, they might want to look to take some advantage. At the very least, try and force out his teleport. Oh, there are wards crazy. behind the Guardian Angels. Oh, my goodness. Might be a flank of the Dragus. Yeah, you can tell they're all, they're really trying here from both teams. And we've hit the point of the game where the gold lead starts to matter less and less. So even though there is a pretty significant gold lead on the side of the Beastman Park, I mean, you got the six item Vayne, but you also got the six item Jin as well. So we're going to see, it, it's really going to come down to how well these teams can play the game. Yeah, it's going to come down straight to which players are better and which aren't. Who plays better as a team? It's going to be straight skill. Yeah, Angel of Ninja should not look to lead any fights right now. And look at this sneaky move coming out of Suru Storm. He is going for that bot wave that is down there. Going to look to try and force out someone to reply to that. But yeah, at the same time, the look at the rotation at the top. Gragas has the TP. I'm pretty sure they have enough wave clear to, to stop them from pushing the inhibitor. Oh my goodness. We could have a very interesting fight on our hands. We are going to get the flank coming out. They're going after this tower. The tension is going to be on. Will we see the fight break out? Phoenix is going to look to start bringing it. And there's the assaulted battery. Will Phoenix survive? No, he gets melted by Angel of Night. With him down, that could be a very crucial victory for the Guardian Angels as they look to continue this fight. The charm lifts, the roof, the curtain call is open. Looking to get those bullets onto Siru Storm. Siru Storm getting a little bit too close, has to flash away. That's a second inhibitor down. And now they have to be very careful about how they play this because their main damage source on the side of the Abusement Parks is dead. And they're looking to take the Nexus Towers. This was a nice turnaround from the Guardian Angels. Yeah, absolutely, but it doesn't look like it's over yet. They're still looking to try and fight this massive shield on the Super Storm. Super Storm trying his best to defend this, but they're trying to focus down the Nexus. They want to take down this Nexus. Angel of Night able to get away from Super Storm, but that's going to be the end of the game. 43 minutes into this game and down seven kills. Guardian Angels come back from a hell of a fiesta. That game was some sweet tension going on that entire game. You could tell that both teams wanted that win so badly. I am very happy for the Guardian Angels, though. They played that really well, especially Gloryhound. He was the real um, MVP, I believe, that game, coming out of the Guardian Angels. Yeah, we're, we're talking about Gloryhound. 
Angel of Ninja's build was set up just for that moment, only that moment. He looked like garbage the entire game, but he got that one assault and battery, and that was the end of Phoenix, and that was the end of the hopes of the Abusement Park winning out a clean sweep series. Yeah, and it was it was well done. Um, it was it was a well played game by both sides, uh, but eventually the buy happened. <laughs> eventually, Vi did buy things. I wouldn't even say just that the flank that the abusement park did was that wasn't it was very well thought out very it would have, well thought out there we go it would have been uh it would have been good if gragas teleported in on the turret like if he teleported in as they were trying to kill that, that turret managed to get there so that it was actually uh, a sandwich it would have been a different a completely different team fight but that started out 4v5 with vane on the front line along with the fact that she that the vane was not positioned right and went and was right next to both of um garden angels damage dealers it was honestly just a badly played fight by the abuse yeah, so that brings us to one two in favor of the abusement part but on that note we are going to take a short break and we will get into game four of the semifinals we'll see you right after the break